Well, hello, everybody. Another episode of Into the Pit with your host, Kyle and Chris. And we have a special co host on tonight from. Hello, California. <laughs> yeah. She has her own show called Help Me Rhonda, and um, she's been a big help. And so we've asked her to kind of join in tonight. And we have special guest, Ronnie LeBlanc who's starting a new show on Travel Channel called Expedition Big Bigfoot. Hello, Ronnie. Hey, what's up, guys? How are you? Doing wonderful. Glad to hear from you. I'm glad that you came on with us this evening. Oh, thanks um, for having me. You know, we're going to get into the show, but um, I like to get to know my guests. So tell us about you, where you were born, raised, all that good stuff. Absolutely. Um, born and raised in uh, central Massachusetts. I lived in uh, California for a good chunk of my life, about a decade. Um, Southern California. I went to school out there. Um, film and television production was kind of my my focus. And I was always interested in becoming a writer and, and focusing on screenwriting. Um, and uh, I started, uh, you know, I had an experience when I was young that got me really interested into the subject of Bigfoot and Sasquatch and, and cryptozoology. And, and that just was uh, turned into like a lifelong passion to learn and read everything I could, any type of news that was coming across the screen. I would, I would get into that. Um, and from some other experiences, I decided to put together a book called Monsterland, which is about an area in uh, central Massachusetts, which is actually part of Lemonster, where uh, I grew up, the birthplace of Johnny Appleseed and the plastic pioneer city. Um, so right here, there's an area that locals for a long time have been seeing strange sights, uh, these lights in the sky, these orbs, orange orbs, UFO sightings, Bigfoot sightings. Um, we're close to a military base. We're on Native American land that's close to some sacred areas. So there's a lot of elements here that I started to take notice uh, based on kind of the research and things that I've been digging into. And um, that's what really kind of led me down this this path of uh, the paranormal, the supernatural, and just trying to understand, you know, what is really kind of going on and what are people encountering out there? Well, I have a couple of questions that go along with that, but, um, okay, what is, I guess, the most definitive proof that you, you've seen out there that there is a Bigfoot? <clears throat> um, just in my personal experience, I've, um, I've seen a trackway in Massachusetts. I've casted a footprint that was deemed a Sasquatch print. Um, and, and as far as I know, it's the first person to, to cast something like that in the state of Massachusetts. Um, I also have had an experience in just recently in Salt Fork State Park in Ohio, where I saw something that was about seven and a half feet to eight feet tall run through the tree lines, through the, through the tree line without making a sound, uh, on two legs when we were in an area that was a you know a hot spot so i've had some personal experiences and i've talked to a ton of witnesses that have had face-to-face -face encounters and different things that i know that this exists and this is real and i've i've approached uh, my books and kind of my uh, my public uh, appearances and things like that as as a believer. I'm not a, a skeptical scientist. I'm, you know, I am someone that believes it, and I'm for believers, and I'm for bringing the truth about what these things are. Well, for anybody that's familiar with our show, we normally talk about ghosts and things like that, but... You know, I'm, I'm so interested in other parts of the paranormal that we're trying to get more people to come on and talk about cryptids. And, you know, we've had guests on for UFOs, but, you know, we're going to have some in the future. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to ask was uh, I've, I've heard this theory that UFOs and Bigfoot are kind of connected. What is your yes. belief on that? Uh, my, my first book really the focus was to show that there is a connection between UFOs, Bigfoot, and orbs, these orange orbs, um, specifically in, in this area, but also I've noticed across other hotspots 
uh, those ingredients are also present. Um, and I think it has to do either with some of these different locations, but also what Bigfoot could be. You know, there's a lot of theories out there. It, it is something physical. It is leaving, you know, physical traces, tracks, footprints, hair. Um, it's getting picked up on video and uh, thermal cameras and, and things of that nature. So th it is something of a physical presence. Um, but I'm, I kind of go with the Native American belief that they have one foot in the physical realm and one foot in the spiritual realm, which would be kind of considered interdimensional. Uh, but they seem to show up in and around UFO hot spots, also around areas that have UFO encounters. Um, when, uh, if you're familiar with Raymond Fowler, he's written some different books about Betty and Drayson. And she's a famous UFO abductee. He's written, I think, five or six books about her, Drayson Affair, Drayson Affair. And uh, her first experience was in Lemonster. And there was a, a rash of UFO sightings. And Raymond Fowler was looking into these encounters, and he got called by the state police, who said, uh, do you also take Bigfoot uh, reports? And he's like, no. Uh, but those seem to just come hand in hand with these different UFO sightings. So I started to look into that and show cases of those similarities or that they do seem to pop up in these hot spots in and around uh, UFO sightings. So your best guess, would you say they're, maybe they're like a scout of some sort? or You know, it, it is, it's something that I'm, I'm not sure if they're here. For me, I feel like they are here um, either you know underground or going into different caves because people are, are seeing them in, in the winter months uh, out here on the east coast and so they you know could be migrating but I think some of them stick around in certain areas and I think yeah could they be um, you know I haven't personally seen one come out of a UFO for example but right I've experienced things with them that it's not necessarily what we think it is you know it's not necessarily just this this primate that hasn't been discovered yet there's something else kind of going on with them and i think there's a long history that if we look at what the native americans talk about we'll find a lot of those answers that we seek um, and i think the ones that are also having a lot of um luck are these habituators people that are in areas that are you know, feeding them that they're coming to their house and they're gifting right. and they're, tr you know, this stuff is, is going on and it's, it's real. Um, I was just contacted by someone that's uh, 20 minutes away from where, where I'm at that has them coming to uh, his house. They left a, a handprint and he also has orb sightings that have seemed to come along with them at the same time that he's, that he believes it's not a coincidence. So when speaking of the Native Americans, um, you know, the the uh, the story of the skinwalkers, do you, mm. you think maybe that might have a connection? Yeah, you know, I do. I've, I've looked at that and there is some, you know, um, that shapeshifter kind of thing going on, quite possibly that, you know, there's been theories that they are. You know, like just like us, right? We are really, truly spirit, and then we're in a, a human body having a human experience, you know, spiritual beings. But, you know, <laughs> could these things, you know, be materializing to look like Bigfoot? I mean, there's a lot of different theories out there, but people have seen, you know, little footprints. You know, people have seen smaller ones that like they're having babies and things like that. So there is something physical going on, but... Uh, you know, it's uh, until there is, I think, that uh, a body, you know, a close to it, people aren't going to really, you know, believe it per se. You know, it's like you really have to kind of say, you know, see, I, you know, right here it is, you know. Well, you know, possibly an interdimensional type of being. Yeah, you know, it's it is uh, a lot of these stories seem to point in that direction and what i find really interesting is i look at uh different researchers that have been doing this for 40 50 years um that have come to the conclusion or they started off with the assumption that this is a straight up 
a great ape. It's Gigantopithecus. It is, that's what it is. But then when they started going, getting into it and going down the wormhole, uh, the rabbit hole of uh, the high strangeness that seems to come along with it, and then these other stories, they started to kind of go, hey, there's something else kind of going on that current science really can't explain. And I think that uh, you know, quantum physics, quantum mechanics, along those lines are what are going to help to define what is really happening. As people talk about them having the ability to cloak, um, to go invisible. And I have experienced this personally. Uh, it was my first experience growing up in, uh, in Lemonster on my way to Monsterland, which was a, a spot where there was like the power lines and the sand dunes and kids would go there to have bonfires and parties. And we'd also ride our bikes and people have dirt bikes and things, but we would go and hang out with our friends. And I was heading out by myself to go meet friends there. And I would have to go through these trails to the back of Fallbrook school, uh, um, which was near my house. And there was a particular trail that I would always avoid. It just had this really strange vibe. It'd be a beautiful day out, but it had this dark, ominous look and feel to it. And there were two trees, you know, either sides. So it looked like this prehistoric gate. Wow. And every time I go by it, I'd pedal a little bit faster and I just didn't, I wasn't into it. And then one day I was just <laughs> feeling really brave that I said, you know what? I'm going down this thing. I'm going to go check this thing out. So I got my, uh, you know, turn, went, started going up the trail, got off my bike, had to walk it up. There's a little incline, a hill, and then you get into the trail, and I start pedaling. And it starts kind of, like, narrowing down, and you can just hear the squeaking of, uh, you know, the wheels and the pedals. And for whatever reason, I kind of just stopped, and I put my feet down, and the, the, the trail had got really narrow that it was almost like this choke point. That I was like, I just felt like there was something there, but I couldn't see it. And so when I stopped, I put my feet down. I just kind of noticed, you know, leading up to this moment that the forest was really freaking quiet. There were no sounds. There were no, you know, birds chirping or squirrels scurrying about. There, It was just like dead quiet. And my senses were kind of on fire, like, don't move any further. So I, it was almost like I hit some kind of weird wall, psychic wall. Mm. And then within a matter of seconds, the forest in front of me erupts like an elephant had was just tearing through across the trail in front of me. And I could feel the uh, reverberation of feet kind of stomping across. And I could see the brush and the trees get moved and bent and broken and all this stuff. But there was nothing visible for me to see that was actually doing it. And what wow. had to be doing it had to be something like a moose or a bear. Like, had to be something big. And I'm 11 years old at the time. So I'm by myself, just terrified, frozen. And as quickly as it kind of happened in a matter of a few seconds and boom, 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 it was done. And it was almost like just kind of like stopped. And I was like that's my moment. I'm out of here. And I pedaled, pedaled out of there so fast. And I didn't go meet my friends. I went just right back home, but I didn't say anything to anybody. I knew all the animals in the woods. I was a big, I'd go to the library and grab tons of books in North America. And I was just trying to figure out what that was. And I never thought Bigfoot. I never equated it to Sasquatch or something that at that age. And I just put it in the back of my mind. And it wasn't until years later upon um, finding, you know, a, a couple had discovered these footprints in Lemonster State Forest. And I went back and casted one and, and seen that. And then it, it was almost like this unlocked in my subconscious kind of thought came back where I was like, holy crap. And as I was reading more stories about almost similar encounters, it just hit me like, man, I think I had some kind of strange, you know, I, I think I had an experience just like a lot of the, what these people describe, but they never understood it at the time. And now they're starting to put those little pieces together, those patterns. And it really floored me when I realized how many more sightings were happening around here. Other people that I know, people that they know that had to do with Bigfoot sightings, UFO stuff, high strangers, you know, missing time, all that. It was just, it blew me away. Wow, I've I've never heard that story of a uh, Bigfoot maybe going stealth, predator, but not Bigfoot. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean there's a lot of stories. 
uh, there's a lot of encounters, and, and some of these do get kind of, I think, pushed to the wayside because they are too kind of strange that, well, I'm not going to put that in the report, you know, mm-hmm. a MUFON report. And he's like, oh, there's somebody saw, you know, I'm not going to put that in there. Oh, or a police officer or someone's going to not tell them, you know, that this is this is what's been happening. This is what's been going on. So there's that fear, that ridicule, that ridicule that still has a stranglehold on on anyone that's in this kind of these fields and anyone that's experienced and is afraid to kind of share their stories. People lose their jobs still. People um, have to move uh, their homes. Their kids get made fun of. Uh, that stuff still happens. So it's it's slowly kind of um, moving away from that as more and more people come forward and say, hey, you're not crazy. I saw it too. Well, uh, what is it? The show uh, UFO Hunter, I believe, where that uh, sheriff ended up getting fired because he had reported a UFO? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah this, I mean, a lot of cases like that. I can understand people not wanting to come forward because, you know, who wants to be called crazy and lose your job? Big, right, exactly. So I know Chris has had a couple of questions on the back burner there for you. Sure. So go ahead, Chris. Well, hey, Chris. it's really cool because um, you've actually connected the dots with a, a lot of the questions that I had. Um, I kind of wondered, you know, about, you know, Bigfoot or what we, we would call Bigfoot, you know, if it was. As you know, uh, an ape or, you know, kind of a different descended, you know, down the evolutionary tree. But then you connecting it with, you know, the um, the orbs and then UFO activity. I kind of think that a lot more things are more interdimensional, more than how a lot of people might think of a UFO. Like somebody, you know, hopping in a, a big boat looking thing and flying from like Mars or Jupiter. I think it's, it's something that like we just don't quite understand. So it's like they're jumping through time and space. I don't think that they're traveling, sitting there, you know, having to travel over great distances of time. So I think that kind of connected with it, especially with the orbs. And then, too, um, you said you went to a, a state park in Ohio? Yes. What part yes. of Ohio? I'm from Columbus. Is that a southern Ohio down towards the Kentucky, uh, West Virginia border? It was uh, Salt Fork State Park and. I'd have to look at a map to tell exactly where it is. I'm trying to remember the exact the, the city, but the, the park is pretty pretty big. Yeah. And it's had a lot of um, uh, Bigfoot, um, you know, sightings. And we had some amazing experiences there just recently. Um, uh, and myself and some, some other uh, people, some other investigators. But um, it's, you know, the, the phenomena is all around. It's not just... I think it's definitely there's a huge amount of stuff going on in Pacific Northwest, but it's also scattered throughout the country too in places that are pretty close to suburbia too, which is pretty astounding to me. That uh, brings me to the are, second part yeah. of my question. Go ahead. That um, as far as you know, aside from the Pacific Northwest and New England, um, even further south than Ohio, do you think there's uh, similar you know types of beings in uh, you know further south like? Like, um, there's things that they call like the skunk ape in uh, Florida or like Lloyd's ape or stuff in South yes. America. Yeah. Yeah. That's- yeah. They're, they're all kind of um, just like you have diff- different species, right, of, of um, uh, monkeys or what, what have you. And, and you're going to have that kind of a little bit of difference in these different areas that are, depending on the climate, depending on the terrain uh, where they've kind of adapted. And so you see some that are, um, like, it seems to me like there's been sightings of more, I guess, black-haired ones on the East Coast, where on the West Coast they're more reddish, brownish kind of hair. But there have also been white ones seen all over the place. Um, So they're all across. Um, And I think there's, you know, everyone has their theories on what these things are. But they're definitely leaving some kind of physical traces. But they are, there is some kind of, connection to this other phenomenon, this other kind of strangest that's, that people are encountering as well in and around their uh, their experiences or shortly thereafter, after they've had a Bigfoot encounter, they have things that happen. Um, strange dreams are a big part of it too, uh, along with uh, some other synchronicities and things like that where just, you know, you, you we only see 99, you know, or rather we only see 1% of the, the visual spectrum. So that 99% of that is kind of hidden from us. And so 
like you said, you know, these UFOs could be just popping in and out space time showing up. They don't need to travel light years to go from point A to point B. They can just kind of, poof, you know, kind of pop in and out. And um, that could be similar cases with some of these sightings where maybe there are, um, you know, Bigfoot or cryptid type creatures that are just straight up physical and they're stuck here type thing. But maybe there's others that have some other capacity or capabilities that we're just not really aware of or understand yet. That's really interesting. Rhonda, I know you got something. Uh, I do. Um, hi, Ronnie. It's hi. Uh, nice, to, nice to talk with you. You this too. Is, this is really, really intriguing. I, um, I happen to be psychic. My job is a bridal tailor, but I am oh, also awesome. psychic. And my question as a psychic, I've seen orbs. I can't tell you how many orbs I've seen. Mm. Um, my daughter and I both are psychic. She's 21 and um, she has the same gift that I have. Wow. Um, when you said that we only see 1% of the 99, I can affirm that uh, just today. I actually had a bride and her sister here and a relative showed up with them and wow. I, uh, told them some things that she shared that she wanted to, uh, she, she wanted to tell them and they were very, very connected with what she was saying and, um, and who she was, her name, even in fact. Um, so my, my question to hmm. you is, I think this is so plausible. It's, it's almost, I think it's a very, very tangible thing. Have you, the team that you are working with right now, uh, they're so impressive. Um, each one of them, Bryce, um, Dr. Mayer, Russell, um, Ryan, all of, all of you have such a foothold in your various industries. What my question is, number one, it's a twofold question. Have you yeah. worked together before? Have, have all of you come, were you put together as um, like a group of awesome people and say, Hey, these guys would be great <laughs> together. Or do you have past experiences and projects together? Yeah, no, we were, this is the first time that we have, uh, worked together. Uh, cool. A lot of cases, the first time we've actually met one another. Uh, I've heard of Russ, I've, I've, I've known of him, but I didn't meet him until then, until this, uh, expedition. And, um, I can't even tell you like, the team is just like amazing because I think on the personality level, all of us just really clicked right off the bat. And we all knew that we were here. We knew the clock was ticking and we knew mm -hmm. that we were a part of something that was really special and that we were all going to be contributing in our own kind of unique ways with our kind of point of views and our research and just some of the things that we were then starting to share and collaborate. And it was just uh, an amazing experience and I, I can't wait for people to see it, to, to really just kind of go through the journey that we had endured. And some amazing things happen and some incredible things are, are uncovered. So I can't wait for people to see that. I'm so excited. Um, it does really, really sound like uh, Discovery Channel put together an amazing dream team. And I think you're very blessed to each have each other, especially what you have Absolutely. been through. I, I can't even, I literally, I... I got so excited about it. I, it's it's nail biting, really. But as as a person who has a psychic gift, yes. in in this group of of the five of you, uh, um, do, do, do any of you experience? Are are you gifted with any um, intuitive or psychic abilities? Would that in any way put into play during any of this ex biting expedition that you um, just experienced? That's a good question. I. I guess the best way to kind of put that is um, I think that, you know, I've had some strange stuff happen to me since I was a kid. And I think I've kind of learned that I've started to develop some kind of gifts that I don't really understand. Like, um, but we didn't have somebody per se that was specifically doing that. But I think if there was anybody on the team that was kind of bringing some of that into the fray, that would that would definitely be me. Because I'm, I'm one where I look at consciousness being a big player yeah. in here, you know, remote viewing, dreaming. I, I look at all 100%. those different elements. Yeah. So 
I was coming in with that, and I was sure. coming in also with the knowing that they can read your intent, you know, 100%. your heart. And so I was trying to come in with, with that, like, hey, I'm not coming in for any kind of harm, but I'm coming in because I want to in, try to entice some kind of contact and, and try to create a communication here. And that was my my goal coming in. And I, and I said, things might get a little wacky, <laughs> you know, like because of what I've kind of experienced and what I know that kind of comes along with Bigfoot. And we sure as heck experience some of that <laughs> i cannot wait the science of synchronicity is um oh it's so it's, awesome it's, it's, it's so literally i mean in itself is magnetic so there's no right. doubt with the five of you together that you're going to attract and draw this particular experience whether whether this being which we know it's a it's a being whether this being right. is able to slip through uh, the web of time. Um, obviously, we have so many layers of time occurring right now, where we are, each right. of us in our respective places. Right. Uh, and and maybe they have the the ability to just um, frequency jump or something. Because if you saw the trees yeah. moving when you're a kid and you didn't see a physical body, that doesn't mean that there isn't something there. Correct. Yeah. And I sense that there was something there. Like I, you know, when you talk about like gifts, I think. I, what I've kind of discovered is some kind of clear cognizance where yes. I'll just get these things that kind of just plopped in my head where it's like, whether it's a word or whether it's whatever, and I'll say something, people go, how the heck? I was just going to tell you about this. So I was going to say this. And yeah. I started to kind of see more and more of that coming into play that I knew that that was going to come into some kind of, um, you know, mm -hmm. being out there, that was going to be kind of being a piece that's going to be kind of being used at some point. So basically that's... you're kind of drawn to them. They're drawn to you. I think so. It's almost like a, you know, like a radio signal where you kind of tuned into that, you know? Um, and I think when you have more people, it's almost like when two or more are gathered, you know, like you, you then get a little bit stronger. And I think that is almost attracted. They're curious to that. And they can sense that. And if it's someone that they feel like they could approach, then they will come forward. Otherwise, if you're there to hunt and kill them, good luck. You're not gonna. You're not gonna see them. Well, I mean, basically, when it comes to like UFOs, they seem to kind of pick out certain people. Yeah. You know <laughs> why not? There's I, gonna be... I have a. I have an interesting story with that, and and which kind of led me down my whole like path with my book is. Uh, my sister had passed away seven years now uh, from cancer, and um, when I was working for the, the Boston Herald, um, she so she always wanted to write a book, and she never got the chance to do it. So I think that was a part of that inspiration for me to do this. But there was an interesting experience that I had when I was in New York City, and I went to, it was Borders uh, Bookstore, Times Square, and it was in between different meetings and I would always go to the different bookstores or rare places and just try to find like cool different books. And I would always go to the new age section, looking for paranormal books, UFO, Bigfoot stuff. And I was in the section and it was, and it was just me in there and I had my head tilted kind of looking at the titles. And then I noticed there was someone off to the side of the room, all dressed in black, black hair. And I just corner my eye looked and kind of was looking right at me. So I kind of went back to the books and then kind of just started approaching closer and closer. And I explained this in, in the beginning of the book, but it's, she says, uh, you know, most of those are crap, right? And I'm like, what, what do you mean? She's like, these books. And I said, yeah, I said, there's, there's some good ones. I know who some of the, you know, the good researchers are. And I, I believe you, yeah, like, you can't you know, accept all of this as, as truth. But so she then says, you know, you know, they look for people like you, your aura. And I was like, okay, what's going on here? And she explains that she was a witch. And so I was kind of like, okay, I, I get kind of taken aback a little bit. And I just told her, yeah, you know, I'm really interested in this subject matter. I think, you know, I want to write a movie about it someday. That was kind of my, my, my goal. And she looks at me and she's like, nope, shakes her head. She's like, it's not going to be a movie. She's like, it's going to be a book. But it's not going to be for a couple years from now because you're not ready yet. But it's going to be about all this kind of stuff and you're going to help bring this to, you know, to, to the public. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever, you know, and 
it was like a year or so later out like two years later whatever it was and i started like writing this thing and it kind of flashed back like oh my gosh she predicted i'm going to start writing this book and some would say yeah it's self-fulfilling prophecy what have you but it was one of those weird kind of occurrences that continued to happen when I was trying to figure out if this path was the right path or not. What what was I doing, you know? And there was those synchronistic kind of events or things that would happen or people that would come into your life that would kind of reaffirm or confirm those things. Oh, yeah, I totally believe in that. <clears throat> so I know you have a podcast. Let's hear about your podcast. Yeah, it's uh, so it's called Monsland based off of, off of the books, and it's really kind of was started as more of a companion um, to the books to kind of continue that story. So I would try to have um, different authors and researchers on that um, kind of had the same kind of theories um, and ideas around this stuff. And um, I brought on uh, Maddie Blake, who's part of uh, the History Channel, Curse of Oak Island. He does uh, Drilling Down, which is a companion show. And he's really into the paranormal. So we, uh, I, he had a radio show called Maddie and Nick on WAF in Boston, which is a hard rock station. And I was doing, I went on as a guest when the book had come out and we had such a great time and the chemistry was awesome. We were just laughing and, and having a blast. So he's like, Hey, if there's any kind of UFO news, Bigfoot news, paranormal news, we'd love to have you on as a regular, you know, kind of contributor or, or expert. And so I said, I got something better. What if we did like Monsterland Monday? And I come in and we can have people and talk about that and stuff. And it's like, yeah, I love it. And so the phones were, you know, would always light up when I would come on. And so from that, he was like, hey, we should really, you know, you started this podcast. I had done a couple of episodes on my own. It just wasn't feeling right. And so he joined me and we really kind of turned this thing into. Uh, a fun, entertaining show, but also something that we would have guests on where you're going to learn something, you're going to kind of experience some things that you didn't realize are happening out there. So it's it's built around um, not necessarily targeting straight up to that paranormal community, which it does, but we've seen that it's starting to reach people that are outside the fringes that are now, now kind of getting into the subject matter. And... Um, you know, whether it's Bigfoot, UFOs, or, or the paranormal, people are, I think, on a, on a larger scale now, getting more attracted in what the truth is about uh, all these subjects. Do you think that there's shows out there that kind of hurt your cause, or do you think they're oh, all kind of go gear? Sure. Go ahead, go ahead. For sure, for sure. I won't, I won't say what they are. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but they're out there, and they do um, cause damage if it's not factual, not real, you know, like, and it's more entertainment or soap opera-ish than, than real kind of research and, and things like that. So um, I think there's there's been more in the past than there are now, but I think that we're going to see more, more and more of this type of content coming uh, because there's such an appetite for it. Yeah, see, in our paranormal world of, of ghosts and things, there are shows out there that kind of gear towards more dramatic. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of people out there that they are throwing evidence online that, I mean, yeah, I could understand why you would think it is, but there's also logical explanations for a lot of it. I mean, we've gone yes. back to investigations yeah. before and figured out this is why you heard this voice. This is why you're hearing this noise, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And I mean, I mean, how do y'all approach that kind of thing? I mean, you, you, one, you know, where's this, who's the source? Like, do you know them personally? You know, a lot of people that in my, area like i know them i've grown up with them so if someone's telling me this experience and you can see they're welling up with tears and they're like i've known this kid since uh, second grade you know that's that's one thing um but yeah people are looking you know obviously looking for for fame and but i think also people are um i guess you know eyes can play tricks on us right so we can see things that we think are something else and after you've been kind of doing it for a while, you, you may notice, oh, this is that. You know, a, a common one, for example, is like the, the lens flare, the green, the green orb that shows up in the photos. Yeah, and they're like, yeah. hey, what, what, what is this? 
it's an orb. I'm like, no, it's really the lens flare because look where the sunlight's coming, you know. So some of those things, but I think also um, the ones that are so, you know, we've gotten to the point where, you know, things are so blurry. It's like, oh, how can you tell that's a Bigfoot or that's a UFO? And then you see things that are so clear and clean, and you're like, oh, that's CGI or that's been faked. So there is no... There is no middle ground. It seems it's like it's it's uh, black or white, but I think um, I think um, you know the technology is getting better, and I think more and more people have access and have that ability to go out there and and participate. And I think that's what's exciting is that everyone has the ability to kind of find Bigfoot. And I think that that's why people are so intrigued with the whole thing and want to do it is because they could be the ones that that discover that or find that piece of evidence that helps to kind of bring that light to everybody to the, to what, what these things are. So pretty exciting. So when is the show actually going to air? So the show airs December 8th, 10 PM Eastern time on travel channel, travel channel go. It will also be on Hulu, I believe, um, after it airs, um, I'll have to confirm on that, but yeah, we're really excited. It's uh, uh, eight episodes, one hour a piece, and we start the journey on uh, Sunday, December 8th, and I'm excited just to get it going. It's been, oh my gosh, I, I, I can't even tell you how, how amazing the experience was, and again, I just can't wait for everyone to, to experience that. Now, I had a, a couple of questions. Um, I almost think that how people say that dogs can sense if people have like ill intentions and you yes. talked about the uh, people only being able to see 1% of, you know, the, the full visual spectrum and then how other animals they see in uh, infrared and ultraviolet. Yeah. It, I feel a lot of these beings, it's like if they've gone, if they're from another dimension or if they've passed over and come back, they can see things in us. We, we look like a glow so they can see our oh, intentions totally. yeah, and stuff absolutely. before. It's, it's like us trying to catch a deer. It's like they're observing us. They're allowing themselves to be seen and observed. And a lot of times they just don't want to. And I think that sometimes when, when people like you write books, it's not so much that. And there's like you said, well, you, you could have evidence. Well, if it's too blurry, then it's, it's not convincing enough. If it's too clear, then, you know, it's got to be faked. If, if you are a person that really needs to see a photograph or video evidence, you're never going to believe it anyway. It's for something right. for people to interpret for themselves and then go out and try to experience. And then if you're in tune with stuff, then you'll be able to find something. But I think they just kind of try to avoid stupid people. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I think they definitely choose who they want to reveal themselves to. I mean... Um, you know, leaving tracks or doing different things or people that go out there and want to have some kind of encounter, then if they are of good intent and, and then they let them also, there's like a gifting thing in exchange that kind of happens. Yeah. I mean, it's a hundred percent. Was that all you had, Chris? Yeah. Oh, the, oh one other thing. <laughs> one thing that I saw that, um, have you ever heard of the incident? It's in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, or the Hopkinsville Goblins. Oh, I, I I don't know too much about, but I I find that really interesting about people seeing almost like these the goblins, but there's been also these uh, almost like these gnome elf like yeah people too have been seen um, all around. That's all. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite a lot. <laughs> Very. That was uh, thought provoking for sure. Uh, um. Okay. So, I think. I, I guess my question is, and I know what you're going to say. Um, would you consider? Like it? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. Mm. I think that, um, okay, so something that Chris said that I found um, really, I think it's very smart, is the aura thing. I yes. personally am one of the weirdos who can actually see auras. I can yeah. talk to a person on the phone, and I know what color your aura is. I don't have to see you in person. I can oh, feel it, awesome. and I know what color I know what color yours is. So What, what, what color I, is mine? It's, it's a... 
it's like a I won't say like a yellow from sun. It's like yellow with a golden, a warm golden yellow color. And oh, I, cool. I have noticed that people who have that color, like I can be at Disneyland and I can just set, I can sense different auras and I know the moods of people. I can read your mood before I even meet you, before I even know what your mm. body language is, just from the back of your back of the room. And I can see which people are going to be receptive, which people are stay away from them. They're not probably that great right now to be around. Right, uh, right. You know, that's yeah. so um, that was awesome. I'm glad you said that, Chris. Uh, so I feel like if they are, which I believe that they are, I believe they're interdimensional in my personal opinion. Yes. But yeah. would you consider, I mean, I know you're going to say yes, but <laughs> <laughs> would you, I mean, you're never going to stop looking, man. You know, no, no. So another expedition televised only incorporating with a conscious effort on um, the psychic portion of it, because yes. um, I have had two of your three encounters myself. And wow. so, yes, I see orbs all the time. They wake me up They're, I mean, they literally going, boing, 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 and they will wake you up because they're just silly and they're fun and they're bouncing around. And they're playful. They're whatever. Um, and I've also had, I was actually talking with, the head honcho over there in his PJ. Very nice PJ. Thank um, you. <laughs> my, my little and we're feet talking t-shirt. About that other one, so. <laughs> yeah, you look smashing. Thank Simply you. Thank smashing. You. Thank you. Um, I'm talking about a UFO encounter I had that scared the living but, but Jesus out of me. I'm not yeah. even going to. That was not like not. Okay. I was trying to not swear. I was trying to. <laughs> I don't think that's considered swearing. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> I was scared leaping to death uh, that's another story for another time but uh yeah so i've had two of the three encounters and um would you consider doing a second expedition i i think this show is going to be a hit because like you said there is an appetite for it yeah yeah uh, a I, third another opportunity yes and i 100 percent, i would say yes because i feel like consciousness the that that's kind of that psychic element is what's kind of missing that spirit science is what needs to bridge the gap to understand what's happening and and like you i do believe that they are um interdimensional you know i come from a different kind of place and i'm and and i that's from experience but that's also from i think again that kind of like that knowing that there is something else going on here and people have to experience it to kind of understand that and i i think you know we all have been taught you have to see it to believe it but i think in this these scenarios and when it comes to bigfoot you have to believe it to see it true now if you see my aura that means that it's time for me to take a shower (laughs) (laughs) your aura has flies buzzing right i I I believe that that i believe it (laughs) no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding hey just a a a personal curiosity when's the last time you uh went back to that place in the forest where you saw that had that ominous uh palpable experience i've never back there i've never gone back to that particular (gasps) spot because because now there is they had um when it happened uh, it was behind the school. It was up on the hill and into the woods and the trails. And now there's the new school that's kind of built right near that trail. And I've never kind of ventured over there again because of that. Uh, um, and it's something that that whole area, this whole, all of Lemonster and Lemonster State Forest and all these other towns around it have had experiences. People, their visual sightings just the past 12 months i mean this is it's all over the place and it's non-stop everybody say hi to darren he's in the chat room hey darren hey darren (laughs) hey Hey, yeah he's he's one of my regular listeners um but but he had a question for you Rhonda. he wants to know what his aura is it's blue it's It's blue blue. all right you get that darren it's kind of like a it's like a uh, if you can go between denim blue and electric blue, kind of. Oh, wow. Yeah. So did you get that, that Darren? That's a cool vibe. That's a very cool vibe. Yeah, he's, he's a pretty cool guy. We'll, we'll let him stay on the show. 
<laughs> or in the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have to look forward to with this new season of Expedition Bigfoot? Uh, so, you know, the, the whole concept of the show is that they basically created this algorithm with some outside help to help determine over the past 50 years, there's been about 10,000 uh, Bigfoot sightings across the country. And they looked at all of those and they're trying to determine through predictive analysis, when would the likelihood of another Bigfoot sighting occur? Where would that location be and what time frame would that, would that happen? So the algorithm focused on central Oregon during the time frame of month for like three weeks uh, oh, for the month of June. Smart. And so the idea was, you know, unlike some other shows where you're kind of going in and you're checking out things after it happens and you're investigating and you're interviewing witnesses, why not be in the place when there's a likelihood that it's going to occur and you're equipped with a team, with the technology, with a game plan to capture evidence any way you can and you bring in one of the, the world's renowned uh, primatologists, Dr. Maria Mayer, who's discovered the world's smallest primate. She's looking for the world's biggest now, and she's part of that team. You bring in uh, expert survivalist, military tracker, Russ Acord, basically Rambo. And then you got Dr. Maria Mayer, who's female Indiana Jones, and then me. And then RPG and, and, and uh, Bryce running the show. So the whole team, it kind of brings their own kind of flavor and uh, expertise um, to the table. And we had everything. We were using equipment that you're going to see that's never been deployed before that has been designed for the DOD and for the military. And we had these toys at our fingertips to be able to use when we needed nice. them. Nice. And it was really awesome. Oh, that's nice. Darren wants to know if you have a Bigfoot call. I do, and I and he'll and he'll hear it on the show. Oh, you won't do it live on the air? No, no. It's the sound pay, of a you're gonna pay for that. Sound of beer cracking open. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have a special Bigfoot stick that you hit up against a tree? I I don't I, I don't I I just try to find whatever is around. Uh, but I, I typically don't do that as much because I think now in this day and age, there's too many people out there that could be, you could be tree knocking with somebody else on the other side of the forest and you have no idea. No, oh, exactly. my God, I get a Bigfoot, you know. Um, I think 10 years ago, it was a method that was um, was used more widely and, and you, you could get some kind of great responses, but now you're probably getting somebody hitting back. <laughs> And Darren also wants to know that if you ever caught a Bigfoot, what would you do with it? I'd give it a big hug. <laughs> you give it a big hug? That's <laughs> that's like the uh, the question when a dog chases a car. It's like, if you caught it, what would you do with it? <laughs> uh, Nayeli wants to know, you know, she's heard of Bigfoot sightings. Have you ever discovered like a pack of them? Um, there have been reports of, you know, that they kind of run as like families, almost like a tribe kind of situation. And so people have seen, uh, say, like a juvenile small one and like mama will be along the tree lines, along the tree lines. So they have been uh, reported with, uh, you know, several together, but I've never really heard of one where there's a, a huge pack. Aside from maybe like Ape Canyon when they all kind of attack the cabin. So <laughs> technically speaking, would you call it a pack or a herd? Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. Could it could it be a flock of of Sasquatch? Uh, is, that, yes. is that possible? I like Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a murder of ravens, right? Yeah. Yeah, murder of crows, yeah. Murder of crows. Yeah, exactly. So why not? I don't think I've had anybody ever really distinguish that before. Yeah, that's that. You might have to coin that now. Well, then I'm going to put my trademark on it, and every time y'all say it, I want uh, Travel Channel to pay me. Okay. <laughs> I don't make that call, but all right. Let's well, see what I can do. You know, I've got some connections over. I'm going to message them, and I'm going to let them know. Hey, I've coined this phrase. You have to pay me when you use it. Oh my <laughs> so y'all are basically going from the west coast to the east coast then 
Yeah, yeah, it was um, it was a change of uh, atmosphere and environment for me. I was, you know, we have Black Bear and, and Bobcat um, out here, but you know, we don't really have mountain lions to, to fend with and things like that. So there's a yeah. some other interesting elements that I had to kind of prepare for. So. So um, I know a lot of people they watch like the ghost shows and they yeah. see see you um you know get your evidence and everything in in an hour's time or basically overnight you know um what's what's the most y'all have ever spent on doing an investigation because I know you stay out there more than just one day. We were out there for the whole three weeks, so um, that's that, that's the longest you know. For a scientific expedition, I've never been a part of, of something uh, the scale, uh, first off, and, and, and the duration of time. So this is the longest I've ever been able to do it. One, because I'm married and have kids, right. so my wife would never allow me to pull out, pull that off. Uh, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, so th- for me, this was the longest, but I know, like, uh, Dr. Morea has been on expeditions in Africa for six months, you know, Madagascar for... It takes time, and we, because of the small window of opportunity with this algorithm, that was the that was the kind of the the main the main piece that we we didn't have much time. We had that three weeks, and we have to kind of hustle and cover as much ground as possible. So, is there anyone in the field that you haven't worked with that you'd like to work with? Um, I would um, I would love to get someone. Um, that is outside of this this world, outside of the Bigfoot world that I think would come into the situation and then would help to kind of bring that locally to everyone else, like the experience that they had. So I think somebody of significance outside of that world would be awesome. But someone like Les Stroud, you know, some of these guys that are just, they've seen it all, all the different environments, um, and, you know, someone like Russ, too, he, he knows the outdoors. So anyone that kind of can vouch that, you know, I've been out here all this time and never experienced this, but, wow, this is this is unbelievable. That's what I would love to have uh, on on an expedition or in the field. I think Rhonda is volunteering. You're in. <laughs> <laughs> she looked kind of excited when you said that. She's like, hey, over here. <laughs> Well, you know. <laughs> hey, you know what? I was thinking, you said we could get light on this, okay? So, if you're ever out and about, like in the night, at night, when you were on this short expedition that you had to, like, be serious the entire time, um, are you, like, an outdoorsy person? Was, was like, I personally... Am not, but I would do it because I'm. De- I I'd be so intrigued to find out yeah. what I could find out. But like, what about like bug bites and crap like that? Oh yeah, I mean, that's no, like I, that's I, a I, very real. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm very I'm very outdoor type person. I love being outside in nature, <laughs> and I love I love being those elements. And just to be a part of that too is just like you almost feel like you're a kid again, right? Cause oh, you're just yeah. kind of like, you're out in the woods. You're kind of like, okay, we're looking for this monster, like this creature. And you're like, this is really happening. And I got like, right. I have a scientist with me and I have all these tools that are, you know, it was just, it was, it was, you had to pinch yourself a few times. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, if, for me, I loved, I loved it. And I, if I could uh, just live out in the woods cabin type situation, I, I would do it. 100 percent did somebody keep watch at nighttime i mean you like or were you too like excited to sleep because i, I would be scared to sleep and then i'd be too excited uh, to sleep it was a little yeah it was a little bit both because what what ends up happening is you're you're in your tent and you've now become accustomed to all the sounds of the woods right and you're hearing you know of we're at base camp so we're near a little body of water so we're hearing frogs and all that stuff and then there's times where all of a sudden it just goes, all goes quiet. And I know when that happens, there's something coming that just came into base camp or is around the area that all the other animal life is like, whoa. And that happens so often that you are just on fire waiting for something. You know, there's so many times I come ripping out of the tent to see, hoping to see something stand, you know, like it was those type of scenarios that it was very difficult to kind of like get rest 
Um, one uh, with that, just kind of having that fear, but then also the excitement of you couldn't wait to kind of get out and do it again. But yeah. it was exhausting. We, we're, we're covering a lot of miles every day, too, trekking and hiking. So Sure. Well, shoot, I know whenever we're on any investigations, if I don't take my sleeping pill, I'm not sleeping because I want to stay up and see right. what's coming. And everybody's been making uh, comments about Josh Gates. So how would you like to go with Josh Gates? I would love that. I think someone of uh, you know his stature and the experience that he has, I could learn a ton. But I think he would be, he would be, I think, a lot of fun to to uh, to be out there doing stuff. You know, expedition, doing doing that kind of thing. He he would be enjoyable to to hang out with. Plus, he's from Massachusetts, so oh, sweet. I like that. Even better. Yeah. <laughs> I know he's a busy man, but I've been trying, trying, trying to get a hold of him, see if he'd do the show. Oh, awesome. So, you know, you need to go find him for me and talk to him. Will do. <laughs> that, that'll be one of my uh, to-dos for 2020. Okay, make sure you write that down. Get a hold of Josh <laughs> Gates for Kyle and get him on the show. Right. And I also got to do your trademark thing, too. With that, work on that. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and write that down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll need to start making some money. Yeah. <laughs> Man, believe it or not, an hour has just about gone by. So, Excellent. I know. That was quick, wasn't it? That was fun. So, um, Ronnie, how can people find you on social media? So, uh, on Twitter, at author Ronnie, R-O-N-N-Y. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. You can also find uh, my, my new book just came out uh, last week, which is Monsterland 2. It's uh, called Monsterland um, shamans sasquatch synchronicity and high strangeness and it's kind of the next kind of adventure uh in the whole monster land kind of series it's non-fiction it's all different encounters that have happened in around um Lamas, massachusetts and massachusetts uh, but you can also go to my website ronnie for any other updates and be sure to check out the show on december 8th sunday at 10 o'clock eastern travel channel Travel Channel. Oh, and Rodney wants to ask a question. He wants to know if you ever hear uh, banjo music playing in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> if I did, I wouldn't tell anybody. You'd probably be more scared of that than you would Bigfoot, I right? Would. <laughs> <laughs> or the millennium, or the millennial falcon darting past you. Yeah. <laughs> and Rhonda, since you're our, our special guest, how do we get a hold of you on social media? I would love for everybody to uh, follow me on Instagram at Help Me Rhonda Official. And my name is spelled R O N D A. There's no H in my first name. Because H is our ill. <laughs> H's are baseball, so there's just like none Um So just follow me there. I'm currently in uh, Los Angeles, California in May of 2020. I'm very excited. I'll be moving to the East Coast. I will be living in Jersey and working in Manhattan and um, awesome. rocking, making some waves on the East Coast over there. And uh, yeah, it's, this has been a major blast. Thank you so much for letting me. Oh, of course. You've been such a big help to me and, you know, shown me with all the stuff I'm doing wrong on social media. Oh, stop it. <laughs> no, I'm showing you all the stuff that you're doing amazing, man. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just helping you level up. That's all. Well, you see, I'm, a, I'm old grandpa. So, you know, social media to me was writing notes and passing them in class. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm still in the baby phase of this. <laughs> I, I thought you said those passing notes in class got you engaged to one sash watch one time. Uh, Didn't it happen that way? Uh, no, no. Didn't you uh, tell me? Uh, um, no comment. <laughs> My children may be listening. <laughs> and Mr. Hopkins, Mr. Comedian, how do we get a hold of you? Uh, I'm on uh, Facebook as uh, Chris Hopkins and uh, the Chris Hopkins Comedian page. Uh, Instagram as uh, Chris underscore Hopkins 027. And I uh, got show coming up. I'm hosting at the uh, Comedy Catch in Chattanooga, 
uh, this Friday, uh, the day after, like the 29th. Uh, I just got done doing a really cool event uh, benefiting the uh, Humane Ed Educational Society here at uh, the Comedy Catch uh, Sunday called Catterday Night Live. We got another one of those coming up. I'm uh, doing the Roast to Santa here in Chattanooga and then doing a bit of fit for uh, Autism Columbus, Ohio, uh, Granville, Ohio. So if anybody is in the Ohio area, definitely get uh, tickets for that. We're trying to move that December 14th in Ohio. And then December 29th at uh, Hyenas in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas. And then some more Texas dates coming up. Yeah, we're trying to get him in, in to move here into Texas. So he's going to oh, be... I'm going, like, I, like my girlfriend said, she said, if uh, I don't get to Texas soon, I'm going to be uh, doing the paranormal show from the other side. So. <laughs> 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 well, I'm anxious because he's going to be basically a neighbor because he wants yes. to move to Austin. So, yes, best part awesome. of Texas. And um, if you want to find us... We're on Instagram at into underscore the underscore P, P period, I period, T period, T period, underscore. You can find us at Pit Paranormal Investigators on Facebook. And um, all my links to all my social media are on the Pit Paranormal page. And I want to thank you, Mr. Ronnie, for being on the show. We really enjoyed it. Yes. And Oh, thank you so much, man. We want thank to, you guys. We definitely want to get you back on in the future so you can tell us all the outtakes that uh, we can't talk about right now. <laughs> I would love that. That'd be great. <laughs> well, everyone, thank you for joining us and meet up with us again. And thank you again. Oh, boy. Thank you for joining us on Into the Pit. Please follow us on Facebook at the Vibes Broadcast Network and Instagram at the Vibes broadcast.